Before I go into the details of this, I just wanted you to know that I was shocked to find that there is another supervolcano that extends towards the Ridgecrest area, right where this uh, diagonal line of our magma that we talk about goes through. And it's called Silver Creek Caldera Supervolcano, Junction, California, Nevada, Arizona. It was a shock to me to find that we have another supervolcano, Southern California. Silver Creek Supervolcano, California, Nevada, Arizona border. We're going to see it at the map. And this is a, a, an article having to do with how rivers of hot ash from the pyroplastic flows of these supervolcanoes, the hot ash and gas, how they move when a supervolcano erupts. The supervolcano is capable of unleashing hundreds of times the amount of magma that was expelled during the Mount St. Helens eruption of 1980, for example, are found in populated areas around the world, including the western United States. In a new study providing insight into what may happen when one of these colossal entities explodes, there are over 20 supervolcanoes around the world, and this is the Silver Creek volcano, a caldera, as we'll see on the map, is the first time I've ever heard of another supervolcano in California. Now the research, uh, beside, well, the one I know of is Long Valley Caldera, north of Ridgecrest, but now we have the Silver Creek as well. Now research focuses on the Silver Creek Caldera, which sits at the intersection of California, Nevada, and Arizona, in the Black Mountains area. When this supervolcano erupted 18.8 million years ago, it flooded parts of all of the three states with river-like currents of hot ash and gas called pyroclastic flows. These tides of volcanic material traveled from huge distances more than 100 miles. A new study suggests that pyroclastic flows from the ancient eruption here from Silver Creek took the form of slow, dense currents, like a river, and not fast-moving jets, as some experts previously thought. The research combines recent laboratory experiments with field data from the 1980s, some of it captured in colorful Kodachrome slides, showing the rivers of ash and gas emanating from Silver Creek caldera and likely traveled at modest speeds of about 10 to 45 miles an hour. That's not too modest. When you uh, remember what happened with Kilauea, that lava was flowing at about 18 miles an hour, and it looked like it was a river. Remember that? That was 18 miles an hour. Now, uh, it says here, the study co-author Oliver Roche says, intuitively, most of us would think that for the pyroclastic flow to go such an extreme distance, it would have to start off with a very high speed. But this is not consistent with what we found, he says. The research was conducted by Roche at Blaise Pascal University in France, David Bush, United States Geological Survey, and Greg Valentine at the University at Buffalo, New York. And uh, it was published in Nature Communications. All information in this press release uh, on the U.S. Easter Standard Time on that date, research on paraclastic flows, is important because it can help inform disaster preparedness efforts. This is what Valentine explained, a UB professor of geology and director of the Center for Geohazard Studies in the UB College of Arts and Sciences. He says, what we, uh, we want to understand these pyroclastic flows so we can do a good job of forecasting the behavior all these flows when a volcano does erupt, he says the character and speed of the flows will affect how much time you might have to get out of the way, although the only truly safe thing to do is to evacuate before a flow starts. The new study favors one of two competing theories about how pyroclastic flows are able to cover long distances. One school of thought says the flow should resemble turbulent, hot, fast-moving sandstorms made up of mostly gas with few particles. The other theory states that the flows should be dense and fluid-like with pressurized gas between ash particles. The new research supports this latter model, 
which requires sustained emissions from volcanoes for many pyroplastic flows. The findings were based on two sets of data, results from recent experiments that Roche ran to simulate the behavior of pyroclastic flows, and information that Bush and Valentine gathered at the Silver Creek Caldera Supervolcano eruption site in the 1980s when they were PhD students at the University of California, Santa Barbara, supplemented by some more recent fieldwork. Valentine said, I always tell students that they should take good notes while they're working in the field because you never know when it could be useful. That's what he said, and he was, uh, he has a fat binder full of Kodachrome slides showing images he snapped around the Silver Creek Caldera when he was a student there, PhD student. The data that he and Bush collected include photographs and notes documenting size, type, and location of rocks that were lifted off the ground and moved short distances by the pyroclastic flows during the ancient eruption of 18.8 million years ago. Many of the rocks the pair observed were relatively large, too large to have been shifted by sandstorm-like pyroclastic flows, which do not pick up heavy objects easily. Denser flows, which can move sizable rocks more rapidly and readily, likely accounted for the rock patterns Bush and Valentine observed. And to figure out how fast these dense flows may have been moving when this Silver Creek supervolcano erupted 18.8 million years ago, the team relied on a model developed by Roche through experiments, and in his tests, he studied what happened when a gas and particle mixture resembling a dense pyroclastic flow traveled across a substrate of beads. He found that faster flows were able to lift and move heavier beads, and that there was a relationship between the velocity of a flow and the weight of the bead it was capable of lifting. Based on Roche's model, the scientists determined that the ancient pyroclastic flows from the silver volcano of uh, Silver Creek would have had to travel at speeds of 5 to 20 meters per second, that's 10 to 45 miles an hour, to pick up rocks as heavy as the ones that Bush and Valentine saw and pictured. It's uh, unlikely that the flows were going much faster than that because larger rocks on the landscape remained undisturbed, uh, according to what Valentine said. Now, the findings could have widespread application when it comes to supervolcanoes, Valentine explains, who notes that patterns of rock deposits around some of uh, some other supervolcanoes heavily resemble those around the Silver Creek Caldera supervolcano. This is by University of Buffalo on phys.org by Roche and uh, colleagues. And now we'll take a look at Google Earth to see where exactly that supervolcano is. Okay, this is the map of it as well. Here it is, right there. Nevada, California, Arizona, right there. Southern Black Mountains, okay, right here. Nevada, California, Arizona, right here. Colorado River. Basically, that's it right there. And here we go. That's the river, as we can see right there. And this is uh, the California border, Arizona border, and the Colorado River, Arizona border, Nevada, Arizona, California. And uh, this is not far from the Pisgah Cater, and this, this is the area of uh, Ridgecrest right there. This is Los Angeles, San Diego. And let's take our 100-mile uh, radius. Remember that said that the ash flow was the power classic flow went, they found 100, well, let's just take it around and goes into Salt and Buttes, that's, that's, that's more, here we go, right here. This is the um, Salt and Sea, that sea there, uh, right to extending uh, north or south uh, west is the Salt and Sea. And let's go around 100, about 100 miles. Okay, about like that. Okay, and okay, that's Ridgecrest right there. But that's 100 miles. So that's where they found the extent of the pyroclastic flows that they were examining back in the 1980s when they were students. And uh, that's what I wanted to show you. And um, again, okay, you know, when, when, we, when we go in, into these articles, you know, we, we just find out more things, don't we? 
So now we know that there is another supervolcano there. Silver Creek Caldera supervolcano. And that was 18.8 uh, million years ago. This is Long Valley Caldera. And this is, um, let's pan out, Yellowstone up here. Okay. And we know that we have a plume, a magma plume, feed from Baja feeding, which is all this is the subduction zone, as we know, and is feeding the all the high threat volcanoes here on the west coast, which are on the Walker Lane Fault System, including Long Valley, Mount Shasta, Lassen Peak, and and the uh, the west arm goes there, and the east arm goes wow right through Silver Creek Caldera Supervolcano up into Yellowstone, right there. That's a fracture, as you can see. You can even see it on the land. And uh, let's go to our um, let's go to our trusty Sizewell Berkeley to see what's happening there. I haven't seen it today to see what's going on. Okay, here we are at Sizewell Berkeley. We have even more earthquakes here at the uh, Mendocino Ridge, the fracture zone, Gorda Escapement. Okay. We have more than there, but this, what I want to show you, okay, this is it right here. This is our area right here, just south of uh, Ridgecrest, where we have our, right here, Colorado River, California, Nevada, Arizona, right here is where we have the Silver Creek Super Caldera Supervolcano, right there. And this is where we have our fracture right there and going up to Wyoming Yellowstone right there. So this is what, I'm very shocked. I really am very shocked. There's another supervolcano. I mean, how many supervolcanoes do we have on the, in the United States? This is, this is amazing. Uh, I am really astonished. And how far is that from um, Long Valley? Let's see, how far is that from Long Valley? About 300 miles. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that that's where the mantle plume is. The, the magma underneath there, it starts here, it feeds the west coast, and it feeds going up this way, it feeds Yellowstone as well. So it passes right through the Silver Creek Caldera supervolcano. And let's see if we've had, what kind of earthquakes have we had there? Well, look, look. These things are Ridgecrest, Colso Junction, Ridgecrest. Okay, that's 3.8 that we had a couple of days back. Uh, of course, I didn't put in the little ones. If we put in the little ones, it's going to be full of earthquakes. And I noticed that the earthquakes are, uh, they increase during the evening for some reason. I don't know why, I've noticed that. Okay, this is it right here. And this is where our, where's the Colorado River? Okay, this is where our supervolcano is, right there, Colorado River. Sandy Valley, Nevada, okay. That's where it is, Colorado River, right there. So, um, that's what we have to keep in mind. So, I'll leave links below for you for this on uh, this size of Berkeley and on fist.org. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help 
economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.